So this is part two of how to import your character into After Effects. If you haven't seen part one, I suggest you go back and see how to set up your character first. So now that we have After Effects opened, let's create a new composition. Go to New Composition up at the top. And we'll call our composition name uh, just whatever. So uh, the way you want to set up your composition is how big you want your video to be. So for HD video, I suggest doing 1920 by 1080. And that gives you a nice widescreen video. Uh, frame rate, I suggest 24 frames per second, which is the same frame rate as film is put on. Uh, the duration is how many frames um, your animation is going to be. Uh, let's just put in a random number like 500. Uh, we can always change any of these settings later if we want to. Uh, background color. Change it to whatever you like, but I personally like using just a neutral tone. Just to uh, have something in there that's not white or black. Alright, so now that we've got our composition. So a composition is like a timeline. It's like its own embedded timeline within itself. Uh, you could have text, you can have animation, you can have backgrounds, you can have special effects going on all within a composition, and then you can create other compositions to put in this uh, to have other animations going on at the same time. A little confusing, but we'll definitely talk more about compositions at a later time. So let's import our character. Go to File, Import, File, or Control-I is the hotkey. Select your character, and where it says Import As, instead of Footage, we want to say composition and retain layer sizes. So select that. And that should be true. We're working with an Illustrator file, but it should be true with the Photoshop file as well, if you created your character in Photoshop. Uh, go to Import, and you'll see we have a new composition called Character Strawberry. If we double click on that, you'll see that a new tab has opened with our character in it. And just so you can see what's going on, I'm going to go up to Composition. Composition settings or control K for the hotkey and I'm going to change that background color to a neutral color. Press OK. So now we can see his arms and some text I added in just for your information. I called this layer delete me so follow the instructions and delete it. So now we have our character and you can see he's imported all correctly. Uh, each body part is on its own layer so yeah, you may notice that your character has been created as a composition. So remember our old composition before with nothing in it? If we drag our strawberry character into here, you'll see that it has embedded as a layer on this composition. And if we double click on character strawberry, we'll be inside of our character strawberry composition. So any changes I make inside this composition I'm just going to turn some stuff off and make him look really scary. So if we go back to our composition, you'll see that those changes have taken effect. So this character animation is going on within this composition. And just to show you what I mean, I'm going to add a keyframe. Uh, don't worry about how I'm doing this right now. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to move his body so it animates away like that over time. And then if we go back to our uh, top level composition, you'll see that animation takes place. So it's like an animation within an animation. And likewise, we can take this composition and animate its position over time. So you'll see the composition's animation is going on at the same time I'm moving uh, the strawberry character around. So uh, this may give you a good idea of how to do like walk cycles. Like for example, you could have strawberry character. <laughs> let's make him not look so scary. It's freaking me out. Okay, let's turn off the blink. There we go. So for a walk cycle, you could have inside this composition, you could have his feet and arms moving around. And then once your walking in place animation is done inside this composition, you can go to your top level composition and just move him across the screen. So he'll have a little walking animation going on at the same time that he's moving across the screen. So that's kind of how compositions work.
Next, we're going to be setting up our character so that we can animate him, and I'll show you how to move his body parts around. So, once your character is imported, uh, his composition is going to be pretty tight around him, so we're going to want to give him more space. So inside of our character composition, we're going to go into Composition, Composition Settings, and we're just going to turn off the Lock Aspect Ratio, and we're just going to give it a little extra space. So maybe like 1000 by 1200. So now when he moves his arms around and his body and stuff, he has a little more room to move. So this little crosshair that you see in the middle is the anchor point. So that's the point on which the object is going to rotate. So if I grab my rotation tool up here and I rotate the object, it's going to rotate around that anchor point. And if I want to move that anchor point, that's with this tool here next to the camera. Uh, the hotkey is the Y key. And I just click that tool. It looks like a square with some arrows in it. And I move the anchor point to another point. And if I grab the rotation tool and I move it around, you can see it's rotating around a different point. So this is an important thing to keep in mind when you're setting up your character. And it's the first thing we're going to do. The only thing it matters on is things that are going to rotate around a pivot. Uh, an example would be the arms, the legs, and the feet. Uh, the body too. And it depends on your character, but generally the way I like to do it is on the body I like to have his anchor point around the center of gravity. So if he rotates, instead of rotating around the center, he actually rotates, oops, grab my rotate tool, he actually rotates around where his uh, center of gravity is. And right now nothing moves with the body and we're going to fix that later. But for now, we're going to go through each layer that we want and move the anchor point. So for this simple character, we don't have to do very much. Uh, it's just for his arms, and we just move the anchor points so that when we rotate his arm, it rotates from the arm joint. So if you have an arm with multiple joints in it, like an upper arm, a lower arm, and a hand, you'd want to do this for each part of the arm. So for the lower arm, you'd want the anchor point to be where the elbow is. So same thing with the feet. And uh, it's hard to select here because the body is in front of the feet and so is the shoe layer. So we just go down to our timeline down here and look for his leg. So we select the leg layer and we move the anchor point up. And same with his other leg. Move the anchor point up. And for his feet, we do the same thing we move his anchor point where his ankle's going to be. So when his feet rotate, it rotates around where the, where the leg is attached. So we go through each layer with our anchor point tool, and we move the anchor point where we want it to be on each layer. So for this simple character, the only ones I set up were his body on the center of gravity, his arms where the shoulder is, the leg where the leg attaches to the waist, and his shoes where the ankle is. So now, let's say I wanted to grab his leg and rotate it. Well, it leaves his shoe behind. So the way we want to fix that is with something called parenting. And the parent column is up here on your timeline. So what we're going to do is we're going to parent the foot to the leg. So we select the foot layer. On the drop down, we select leg right because we're on foot right. And when we parent it to leg right, and we select leg right, and we rotate the leg, the shoe now moves along with it. And actually that layer order is not correct. We want that leg to be in front, so we select both the foot and the leg, and we move it in front of the other foot and the leg. So now his shoe and his leg are attached. So anytime I move his leg, either with the rotate or moving it around, his shoe will stay attached. And if I rotate his shoe, that'll move, and then I rotate the leg, and the shoe will rotate with it. So that's how we parent objects to each other. So let's just undo that really quick. So we want to do that with each object. And you can use the drop-down menu. For example, we're going to parent the arm to the body, because we want the arm to follow where the body goes. We can either use this drop-down and select body, or we can use this little squiggle. And we hold down our mouse on the squiggle, and then we drag this line, the string, over to body. 
and it'll automatically parent to body. So now when we move our body, it moves the arm along with it. So we want to do the same thing to our leg. So take our leg right, string it up to the body, and when we move the body, we see that not only does the leg move, but because the shoe is attached to the leg, the leg also moves. So we want to do this to every body part. So we're going to take our arm, parent it to the body, take our eyes, parent that to the body, and anything on the face, like a mouth, or his eyes, or his eyebrows, you're going to want to parent to the head. In this case, the body, because all he is is a body, which is actually his head. So, every body part on his face, like his eyes, and his blink layers, which are just artwork covering up his eyes, we want to parent to the body. Same with his quote-unquote hat, which is actually his little leaf topper. We want to pair it to the body. So a quick check. If we move our body, we can see that we haven't done the leg yet. So repeating the same process, we want to attach foot left to leg left. So we pair it that. Now when we move his leg, that shoe is attached. And we pair it his leg to his body. So now, moving his body, all his body parts move along with it because everything is parented to it. So now, when you want to animate him doing a jump or something, you'd want to set keyframes on his body. So you can keyframe him out jumping around, and then you'd keyframe out his arms moving up and down or his feet moving up and down. So that's how you set up your character. In the next video, we'll talk about how to actually get into animating this character. And that's it. If you have any questions at all, feel free to send me a message on my Twitter handle or send me an email at the email located below. If you'd like to see more tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date to all the animation tutorials that will be coming out soon. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.